Hey guys, what's up? It's Stacking Chairs, the youth ministry podcast all about serving in youth ministry, whether it be youth group or youth camp, whatever God has you serving in, that's what we're talking about. I'm one of your hosts, Josh Paul Hamas. I'm joined by my fellow host and good friend, Kyle Gray. Josh, um, this is an interesting episode because we are, we're actually going to release it later than we are than we recording. recorded it. Yeah, this is, this is the tail end of camp. Uh, and so you may still hear some stuff. Uh, in the background, but we had a guest that was here. Uh, Couldn't pass it up. Could not pass it up. Couldn't yeah, pass listen, up the opportunity. There are, there are sometimes you're like, you know what? We can do this at another time. Then there's some situations you're like, no, we, we can't miss this. Where the person lives outside of the country. Yeah. Has a unique uh, ministry opportunity. And Absolutely. then also brought a ton of kids to camp. How yeah. do you miss that opportunity? No, you, you can't. You can't. And so our guest today is my good friend, uh, Umberto Mendez. Uh, Umberto, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? What do you do? My friend Kyle, yes. First thing, first thing, I have Kyle's friend. Yes. That's my identity. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's where my identity yes. res resides. Resides. Yes. Aside from yes. Christ, of course. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm Umberto. I am from Dominican Republic. Hey! Yes. Uh, Iglesia Cristiana Oasis and King's Christian School is where, where we work. And we're here. I'm a pastor at the church. Yeah. And I work with the teens of the church and I also preach at the school for chapels, uh, counseling, and the teachers, mm -hmm. and uh, all the ministry, uh, spiritual formation yeah. at the school. Also preach at, at the church, uh, at youth group, and counseling at church. Now, okay. you grew up in the DR. Yes. Right. So how did you, because when I first started connecting with, so Brandon Arnold and I mm -hmm. uh, have gone for... Wow, probably five, six years at this point mm -hmm. that we've been back. Uh, the first year or two, Umberto was not there. Uh, but man, what a difference it has been since he has joined the team in focus, in direction, in organization. It's been it's been phenomenal. Um, so as, as a speaker that gets to go, thank you so much for all, all the time and effort and energy. And it's always nice to know that you have somebody that is focused on, okay, like we talked about, why are you doing yeah. Camp. Yeah. We don't want to just do camp just so we can say, okay, we did camp. Mm -hmm. Woohoo. You know, off. but Umberto really does a good job following up with these students and as he does counseling and different things throughout the year. Mm -hmm. And well, let's, let's talk about the, that, that decision that you made at camp. Well, let's talk, let's go back mm -hmm. to this point here and this point here. Yeah. And so I've really, really appreciated that. But, uh, when we first started coming, you weren't there. What, what brought you into, uh, Iglesia Baptista Oasis? Iglesia Cristiana Oasis. Uh, yeah, well, Iglesia Cristiana. well, I grew up, I grew up at that church. Oh, you uh, did? Yeah. I, I was 12 when I first were, were was oh, wow. in our first camp. Okay. And uh, you were in the first camp. Yes. Wow. No, no, no. In my first camp. Oh, okay. At church. That's different. I was, I was 12. And that first time I, I knew mm. that, uh, I will, I will be for the service of God. Wow. I took that decision and it was clear for me, mm. but, uh, I began to work and, um, my jobs and my, I was entrepreneur in that, mm -hmm. that time. Uh, but when I was 40, Mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of time, the time of God. Mm -hmm. uh, like the Lord told me, this is the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of changes that we can talk here happened in my life. Yeah. That ended with me taking the decision. Uh, uh, we as a family mm -hmm. take, take the decision to, to go to the full-time ministry wow. and has been a blessing. My beautiful, uh, lovely wife, Patricia, uh, uh, played a, a great role in that decision. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know her. Yeah, I do. She's great. <laughs> By the way, Patricia, anytime you want to be on the podcast, you come on and be on the podcast. We'll take that's you. Right. I love you, baby. And um, since that, that's my, I knew that was my um, vocation, yeah. my calling, my, mm -hmm. my, the, the place that God wanted for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so, made the decision. And, we, and, we, I was in the, in the corporate world. Yeah. Before I was working in a supermarket chain, very good. Okay. And after I, I was going to another big, corporation mm -hmm. but in the middle of that transition we came the calling and we responded you have wow. one one child yeah great great kid 15 jose Hello. fernando yes great great young man it's been neat to watch him kind of grow uh what what's what's a big joy that you've been able to see in him the past maybe year or so or maybe this past week at camp what's something that just to give a little love and praise for your son 
my son. Yeah. Oh, he has been growing the Lord. We mm. have we have uh, a lot of talks, yeah. good talks. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure he's walking towards uh, uh, being a man of God. That's awesome. Yeah. And that fills me with joy. That's awesome. Yeah. Really. And him. Yeah. Yeah. So you you've you've started working uh, with this church now for how many years? You said. Um, four years. So for four years. Yeah. Okay. What what makes camp uh, so imperative or so important for you and your youth group? Why why come to camp every okay, summer? Okay. Um, uh, uh, my vision of of youth uh, work mm -hmm. in general is centered on discipleship. Yeah. And we we know and we we implement mm -hmm. uh, the um, uh, five approaches for discipleship that we see in the ministry of Jesus. Okay? Mm -hmm. The first one, and I, we, we think th the five approaches are essentials. Mm -hmm. For example, the first one is big groups. Yeah. The second one is small groups. Mm -hmm. The third one is personal or mentoring. Mm -hmm. And the fourth one is camps. Gotcha. And okay. we, think, I think we think Jesus made camps mm -hmm. with, the, with the disciples. Yeah. And it's important because he took them out. Mm. Okay, yeah. To be a part of the daily life yeah. and concentrate in one topic, in one issue, and motivate, inspire them. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And the, the, fourth, the fifth one is service opportunities. Mm. And we work the youth group towards those, those five approaches. And for us, camp is like the culmination of a whole year. Yeah. of uh, ministry with them. Yeah, okay. Uh, what what stage or um, what are you guys looking for to move a student into that one-on-one -on -one, uh, discipleship mentoring? Is it just anybody that wants it or are you looking for a couple different things that shows that a student doesn't just say, oh, that sounds good, but they're really going to get involved in it? Okay, awesome question. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the first thing we, we we require that the student wants it. Okay. Mm. Should want it a lot. Mm. Yeah. And uh, the second thing is that uh, can make he can make some sacrifices mm. towards that discipleship time. Yeah. And that's that's two of the biggest uh, requests. Yeah. But at, at church also we are building um, a group of of a fellowship of uh, a partnership of other. Yes, yeah. uh, servant. Okay, like gotcha. can discipleship and mentor yeah. the youth group because at church we have about 80, 80 teens. Yeah, it's, it's a lot for just one person. Yeah, so we have a a, a great and mm. I say hello to them. A great uh, fifteen uh, helpers, mm. collaborators, servants. Gotcha. That go every Saturday and during the week. Mm -hmm. They they have a follow up ministry mm. and mentoring with the ones that requires and want them. Wow, gotcha. Okay. Do you have any students discipling other students? Oh well, at school we have a program. Okay. We call it gotcha. fifteen fifteen. Oh, okay. Yes. It is fifteen fifteen. It's fifteen minutes every fifteen days. Oh, okay. They get together at the recess and talk about their faith. Oh. Gotcha. Okay. That's been great. That's yeah, neat. That's yeah. cool. And and even at a Christian school, I like that yeah. their focus is not just because you automatically go to a Christian school, you automatically have a yeah, deepening yeah. relationship with Jesus or really any relationship at all. Um, that's neat. Now you guys, um, you put on a camp as well as there's a time, like I said, that, that myself and, and Brandon Arnold, a guy that's been on here before come and be with you guys. What do you think it's, in, why do you think it's important to do both of those in one year? Well, uh, great question also. Thank you. You're a greater <laughs> questioner. Uh, uh, well, for, for church, for example, it's exclusively for the church members. Mm, okay. Mm. So, and we have a camp for the, for the school. Okay. So for, in this school, there are different churches. Mm. And we can reach those, those Jews of, of those uh, churches. It's, good. it's very important for mm. us. Yeah, uh, and this is a different stage, different approach, mm -hmm. because we are not pastors of those kids. Mm. Yeah. But when I do camp for our kids, mm. th those are my kids from yeah. my church, and the approach is more personal, and more uh, 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 different. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like you, you personally, especially, have this real heart to to be teaching, discipling, connecting with young people. 
And I know that you do that in, in, a, in another way through a podcast that you've started. Yes. And so I'm just curious, because as we started this podcast, we were really like kind of wrestling through what's our purpose? Uh, are we being intentional about this being a ministry? And so I'm curious from your perspective, because we've heard your, your vision, we've heard your values. I'm curious to you, your podcast, how is that a part of that ministry? Great. Also a great question. Hey, I got a question too. <laughs> yes. Look, I, 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 we are from a different generation. What? We, we, didn't, we didn't have you and me. We didn't have a podcast. We are or you and no, he No, you and me. Oh, wow. I think you are a, a, a child. Yeah. You know, <laughs> for us. More or less. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and we, have, we didn't have those. those that may those, be the best moment yeah. ever. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll give it a loss in translation <laughs> moment. I'll give it to you. <laughs> probably not. Probably Sorry for my, for my no, English. It was I'm, intentional. I'm, I'm no, proud. I'm picking on you. Okay. You're fine. Okay. That was intentional. Yeah. He knew. Yeah, yeah, I knew. <laughs> um, we didn't have these tools. No. Yeah. It was hard. We didn't have WhatsApp. We didn't have yeah. uh, uh, social media. Mm -hmm. We didn't have podcasts. Mm -hmm. if for a, a youth leader, it was hard to reach mm -hmm. when uh, the, the young people, when they are in their houses, yeah. in their schools. But podcast, WhatsApp, mm -hmm. can you can go where they are. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they are at Spotify. Mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. they are at YouTube. Mm -hmm. And they are at Apple Podcasts. Mm -hmm. And they are... Uh, wherever, yeah. or, 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 or other places, mm -hmm. those are places mm. uh, where they are. It's like yeah. a mall. And, and you have to be present there. Mm. And they are listening a, 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 um, a song, but they, they, uh, they, there, there comes your podcast in a, in a little square. Yeah. And they have this, this uh, answer. Can, uh, should I listen to it? And they listen. Yeah. Now, what is it, what is it present? What is it yeah. called? It's called Verdad y Vida Espiritual. Oh, understand. Yeah. 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 The truth, truth and, spiritual and the life. spiritual. Yeah. Oh. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. A lot of high fives today. Yeah, there are. Today's episode is brought to you by high fives. Um, <laughs> and so you have a very interesting format. Uh -huh. You said you choose one topic uh -huh. or, one, a, one book. or a book and you do 10 episodes. Yes. How do you decide um, how to break up those episodes? Well, I try to take the most uh, influential verses of that mm. book. Okay. Mm. The most important, the okay. most famous, or the most, the most, uh, I, for my, uh, from my perspective, more important mm. for gotcha. the gospel, for the life of the uh, young people. Mm. So the, my next book, for example, will be Romans. Oh, mm. it's great. Yeah. Charles and you're Lord you're only going to do 10 episodes on yes, Romans? Yes, <laughs> it will be hard. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, tell I don't me about know. It. <laughs> Wow. Yes. That's neat. And then um, who's your audience? How have you decided who to go after and who to target? Well, it's, I, I'm trying that everyone can listen to it yep. mm -hmm. because it's like devotional, mm -hmm. even yeah. non-Christian. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's, it's target. I know the uh, most pe people that will listen to it are young people mm -hmm. from like uh, 16 to 30, for example. I know gotcha. that's la, la, like the uh, the group of people. Yeah, the target audience. Yeah. Yeah. Is that's it required it. listening for the school? No. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> oh, Not that's yet. a great idea. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Yeah, the listenership just yeah. went all the way up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I think it's so key because... Um, you know, our heartbeat when we sat down and we said, yeah. Hey, who, who do we want to be our target audience? Number one, you know, well, I shouldn't say, you know, you're hoping that just because you have a target audience that more people than just what you're thinking mm -hmm. are going to, are going to buy in. And, uh, and we started thinking about, okay, who can we reach and how can we reach them? But it's been so encouraging to watch God really grow that to be even more than you ever thought mm -hmm. yeah. it, it would be. You, you were going to say something. Parents, for example, have told me, please. I, I'm waiting for the next episode. Yeah. Oh wow. And uh, what one thing I didn't I didn't mention mm -hmm. before was that uh, during our mentorship time with 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 kids, yeah. we try to give them tools for their personal mm. devotions and yeah. growth. And sometimes it's difficult to find mm. in Spanish. Mm. Sometimes it's difficult. Yeah. Really. Yeah. And that's what that also was one motivation for me to make yeah. something. Mm. If you can find it, do it. Mm -hmm. Try to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why I also wrote a little book. Oh, would you, you don't know that. I didn't know that. No, you don't know. Did, did, you, br did you bring us a copy? No, I, oh. yeah, it's, it's, it's on Amazon. It was oh. a self-publishing book. But it's also, it's very short, and it's also for our teens or, or uh, um, 
when people begin their, their Christian journey, mm-hmm. the basic things, yeah. it's hablemos de la vida cristiana. Let's talk about Christian life. Yeah. It's very small, but I, I, I didn't find something like that yeah. for beginners. Yeah. You know, everything is so complicated. I, right. I, I, yeah. I, I thought we should do something uh, simple. And do you know something, another thing? Tell me. All these things, the book, the podcast, yeah. do you know when I could do it? When? During the pandemic. Oh. When we, when we yeah. were uh, isolated, yeah. Yeah. that was a good time. Yeah. yeah. So well, you you look, I'm so sorry, Josh. You, yeah, you, took, you took possibly the worst possible time in uh-huh. everybody else's eyes and said, I'm yeah. going gonna, gonna to create something beautiful mm-hmm. out of this. Out of, that, I like that. Well, I was just going to say it's cool because, I mean, even word of life, I mean, we found, we had to find creative new ways to do things. Mm-hmm. And we also, it gave us a... Uh, kind of like a time to focus on some important media elements. I mean, even uh, our training resources for new missionaries, we're able to create online resources during that time. And so God doesn't let anything go to waste. No. Uh, Your podcast resources that we were able to create. I mean, even this podcast, uh, the initial idea came out even during the pandemic is when Mm -hmm. we first started talking about it. And so it is really cool to see how God uses that time to build up these times. Um, That I had another question. It's not on the same topic, but you were talking about target audience. Mm-hmm. Your target audience is is youth. Mm-hmm. You talk about wanting to serve in ministry for youth. You're working with a school. Mm-hmm. It's youth. Why youth? Why why kids? Why teenagers? Why not adults? Like why why that younger generation? Do you know something? It, it wasn't my choice. Hmm. Okay, it was, it was God's choice. Mm. Yeah, really. Yeah, I, I remember my love pastor Tomas. He's yeah. my mentor, my spiritual father, and he told me. Uh, you don't choose the calling. The mm. calling is choosing you. Mm. And it's, it's right. Mm. And I remember when I got into the ministry, it was another group I was going to work with. Okay. Mm. The bigger ones. Yeah. And there was a change. Last time, lights made a change. Yeah. Uh, I was praying about that. And I know now it wasn't, uh, for, uh, it was designed by God. Yeah, no accident. No, no mm. accident. Yeah. But it wasn't my plan. Like I planned sure. it. Right. Yeah. So what, what did that calling look like for you? Uh, well, love and love, love for the kids. Mm. That's the, I think if you ask me what's the essential part of this calling yeah. and the essential part of ministry for youth is, is love. Mm-hmm. Hmm. All other things are mm-hmm. accessory. Gotcha. Yeah. It's love. If you love them really, yeah. they will love you back. They will listen to you. They'll yeah. receive correction. They'll receive instruction. They yeah. will be inspired. Mm. Yeah. So we, we want to ask as leaders. For love, yeah. real love. Well, yeah. and I think you bring out a, a, a very interesting point. And and it, one of the things that I enjoy about you, or that I appreciate about you, is is when you, you you rattled off a bunch of different areas and ways to love, as if all of them are equally as important, and they are. But you said when you love them, they will receive correction mm-hmm. because love doesn't just let people do whatever it is no. that they want to do. Mm. It, it guides, it says, no, yeah. it, it, it lets you know when you're, when you're out of line. Um, how have you seen that specifically and that ministry of loving a kid enough to look at them and say the hard thing in a loving way, but say the hard thing in a spirit of truth. How have you seen that? create some neat ministry opportunities with these youth? Because let's be honest, they live in a world that not a lot of people tell them no. no. Yeah. Well, first you have to, you have to, they have to be, feel loved before the correction. Hmm. Hmm. That's important. Yeah. It's very difficult to, you come for the first time with a big correction for a kid. Yeah. Before you have to build a loving relationship. They, hmm. they, they should feel uh, loved at, uh, in, in a way, they should feel that you are something. They, they are something for you. Mm. Something important. Yeah, value. Mm. Uh, mm. A smile, a, a little talks, mm-hmm. but also big talks uh, with them. And after you have that connection, of mm-hmm. the, and they know for sure, for different sacrifices you have done for them, uh, that they're loved. Then when comes the opportunity to say no, mm-hmm. they will receive it. I have, be, I have seen it mm-hmm. a lot of mm-hmm. times. Yeah. And they, I, and they tell me, I know, yeah, I receive it. Thank you. Yeah, and that's like the episode we did with, um, with Scott Foreman, where he talked about, yeah. you know, uh, authority and influence. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and as especially with these older kids, being intentional about the influence that you have. Yeah, 
and not just the authority that you have. Uh, there was an episode that was on my docket that I want to still talk about one day, and it's the um, the uh, the age of knowledge, mm. where kids have access to so mm. much knowledge that you can't come to them anymore. Yeah, they can. I mean, look. I mean, I have my little tablet here. We can just find anything. And so you can't come to a kid and say, hey, I know more than you because they can go and research just as much as you can. Mm -hmm. And so you have to come and show love more than ever because you have that influence then through that avenue. Well, and it seems like there's this, you know, there's that old adage. People don't know how much people don't care how much, you know, yeah. until they know how much you care. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but 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 exactly. And and. We came from a generation where if somebody was an expert, you automatically gave them an amount of respect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You automatically gave them an amount of authority. Even if you didn't necessarily agree with them, you respected the time and effort and energy that they put into it. Well, now kids are like, it doesn't take that long. Yeah. I, can, I can Google that in two seconds. Okay. Mm -hmm. let, let, let me give you an example in, the, in, the, in our past, okay. in our generation, yeah. that mm -hmm. maybe explain what we are taking. Do you remember when, when you, you, we used cassettes and mm -hmm. CDs for mm -hmm. music. Uh -huh. And you remember what event or what, what idea broke that industry? What? Oh, the, the, the digital music. Oh, yeah. the music, yeah. music videos. Uh, no, no, digital. Oh, digital music. Oh, yeah, okay, like yeah. using MP3 player, yeah. MP3. Yes. Yeah. That broke the industry oh, yeah. because everyone, everybody could get yeah. an, an MP3 right. in different <clears> ways. <throat> yeah. So what the industry made that you cannot like uh, uh, imitate, mm -hmm experience right mm. so data yeah experts data now is accessible to everyone hmm. yeah but there is one thing that you cannot imitate it's experience and what is love yeah mm. care relationships mm. so relationship yeah so in the youth ministry now authenticity mm. love yeah uh, care is the key because mm -hmm. knowledge and data they can find it every way yeah. So let me ask you a question. Let, let's talk old school. Because okay. you knew that girl was interested in you. Or you showed that girl that you were interested in her when you made a mixtape. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> and it took time. And you remember waiting for the, for the oh, yeah, song and, and the radio. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, and, and, and I know we joke, but at the same time, yeah. let, let's translate that out to these kids. They want you to be around. Mm -hmm. They want you to be available. They want you to be there. Um. More important than again and again and again, more important than a kid going, wow, you really blessed my life because of the information you shared with me. It was, you were there mm -hmm. with me. Mm -hmm. You were there with me. I remember my, my, my <clears throat> pastor, Thomas, Thomas. Mm -hmm. one thing I remember about him it was that he had an open house, mm -hmm. an open refrigerator. What? Wow. Yeah, when I was a kid. And we went to his house. And it was like love in practical, uh, yeah, uh, in practical form. Ways. Yeah, in a show. Yeah. yeah, and that's experience. That's love. Practical. I remember more that even that his the points of his sermons. Yeah, yeah, that's a point. That's crazy. I love that. That is so cool. How how much like love and relationships and all those things really transcend hmm. like the time. I, well, there's a whole movie about that, Interstellar. The whole movie is about how yeah. love is the thing that's yeah. outside dimension and yep. can transcend time. Yep. And so uh, it, it's very true in youth ministry. We, it's the Interstellar. Uh, yeah. That's the name of the episode. Wow. Interstellar Youth go. Ministry. There wow. you go. Hey, how do you, uh, how do you decide your topics? Do you, do you look at what you're teaching the youth? Do you look at, man, I've talked to several youth and, and they're going through this. And so I think we need to talk about how do you choose your topics okay. or your, or your books? Good. Um, for example, at school, <laughs> at school, they have, uh, they have some, uh, indica indicators mm -hmm. for spiritual life that we work. Mm -hmm. They are j already written, uh, for school. So gotcha. uh, we work on that. Mm -hmm. At, at, at church, we choose the group. Mm -hmm. We have, we work 10 months of the year. Okay. So we choose 10 topics that we want the kids uh, understand, absorb during our our years mm. uh, in the teen ministry. Mm. So they are the gospel, uh, uh, purity, uh, service, devotion life, mm. uh, apologetics, and every month we work in different way every mm. week mm. that topic. Wow. Okay. And we repeat it every 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 year in 
through a different lens, a, a different uh, perspective. Mm. Gotcha. For example, this August is apologetics. We're going to work on the resurrection and the mm. importance of resurrection for the truth of the gospel. Oh, nice. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. yeah. So I have, I have one more question, no, but I don't want to end it, Kyle, if you have like more questions, though. Uh, no, listen, you go. I, I did that to you a couple of weeks ago. Did you? I, I don't know I'm if you could recount that. There was, uh, we were interviewing somebody. And I was like, all right, all right, here's the last question. And I was like, wait, Josh, I'm so sorry. And you're like, no, you're fine. <laughs> no, go no, ahead, go ask for it. Take so, out the last question. <laughs> so here's my last question. Okay. okay. Um, how long do you plan on being in youth ministry? Because we talk so much about oh, how youth yeah. ministry for a lot of people, and, and no fault, we're just kind of talking about like, it's a stepping stone. It's like, hey, youth ministry is not my ultimate goal. It's just a step to the next step. So for you, is youth ministry like your ministry for the rest of your life? Or do you see this as like something that you want to pass the reins at a certain age? Like, what's your thoughts on that? I don't know. That's a fair answer. That's an honest answer. You know what? <laughs> I like that answer. Yeah. I'm just walking uh, the, I'm just trying to listen the direction of the Lord yeah. every year, every month, every day. Now I don't have a, a ministry like plan to the mm. long term. Mm -hmm. I'm, I know I have to be where I am now. Mm -hmm. mm. And I'm trying to prepare the best in everything that God uh, puts on my hands. I also teach to the church every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So not only to the youth people. Yeah. And I also, also work in the counseling mm. uh, center of the church. Gotcha. That, so if God uh, wants to move me, to move us to a new, different ministry, I'm... Yeah. yeah. So your calling is ministry. Yeah. 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 I love that, honestly. So my my last question, which I think is honestly going to turn into two or three questions. Okay. Um, you have a son. Yes. He's in the youth ministry. Yes. How does that make it good, and how does that make it hard? You being one of the leaders in the youth. Can we can we talk about? Of this? course. All right, let's talk about it. <laughs> so oh man, we how just how has this something. been a well? Because let's be honest, there's a lot of these leaders out there that are listening. There's a yeah. lot of people, even that are watching. By the way, you can still watch this or as of now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, you know, and there's some there's some positives, and there's some there's some hard things you got to, I don't want to say negatives, but there's some, there's some difficult things to walk yeah. through. So what, what are some of those blessings and what are some of those difficulties that you've had to walk through? First of all, let me explain what, what, what relationship, ministry relationship, relationship I have with him. Okay. okay. Mm. So I teach at school and he's at school. So oh. he listened to me preaching every, every Monday. Yeah. Okay. And I preach on Wednesday at church and he goes Wednesdays a church. Yeah. And I preach in the youth group on Saturdays and he goes on Saturdays and sometimes on Sundays. So he, 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 he sees me he, mm -hmm. uh, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now I came, I come here and I see with Kyle at the front line and he looks, you are there also. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this, this brings a gr great opportunities. Yeah. Because I can follow up his uh, his spiritual journey, his mm -hmm. his, his growth, mm -hmm. and I I know for sure that he's walking and loving the Lord. Mm -hmm. So that's a good part, and I can uh, uh, kind of protect him and and guide him. But he has also negative parts. He he, he has sure. fifteen years old. He's a teenager. So yeah, he's not a pastor. Yeah, he's a normal fifteen. Engineers want to be independent mm -hmm. from his parents, mm -hmm. so it makes it difficult because he see we see him everywhere, and we're trying to work on that. But it's a very challenging situation. Yeah. Sometimes we talk about it. Uh, for example, you remember I told you now in the camp, and this morning he told me, "I love you, Dad." I love it. Oh, he made my day. I love oh, that. That's great. So if he if he feels loved, and you can try to. Be, be aware of that yeah. and take a step back sometimes, Yeah, they will appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's got to be hard to balance out being yes. dad and youth pastor and, you know, also like school <laughs> principal. <laughs> I, I'm not sure what the role is exactly. That. And, no, and very famous podcaster. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's a spiritual formation. Yeah. Yes. El, yes. El, el, el más famoso. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Exactly. Right, there we go. <laughs> the uh, word is right, but not the person. But no. <laughs> how, how has you being in these positions, you being 
the one that is, and I know that you let other people preach, but I know that you do most of it because that's your job. Mm -hmm. Um, how has that opened up doors for better accountability with your son? Mm. Well, look, first, first I know what he's listening at. Okay. Mm. You, you know, mm -hmm. I know that he listens, he have been exposed to this uh, sermons mm -hmm. and ref, uh, reflection and challenge, so I know what to talk to him. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we every, every when I, I didn't told you this, every Wednesday, there is a McDonald's like uh, 200 uh, meters from my house. Yeah. And on Mondays uh, uh, afternoon, we go together and talk man to man. I like that. I, he likes uh, McDonald's fries. Yeah. And I, bu I buy him a McDonald's fries. Nice. And we talk great. about what it means to be a man. Yeah. And when, so when we preach uh, some topics, we can bring them on those conversations mm. and, and listen to him. Mm. Yeah. That's great. I, I think that's so important, Josh, because I think let, let's, let's just be real for a minute. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people in ministry that the last people they look to are their family oh, to minister to. Yes. Yeah. And that's and, so easy to do. And it, and it is because you just think, well, they're around me. I'm, mm -hmm. Of course I'm ministering to them. Of course they want to be a part of it. And, and you have to be, you have to be focused, intentional, not just mm -hmm. intentional, but focused, intentional. Yeah. And, and man, I, I can be extremely guilty. Sure. Um, you know, Nicola and I have been talking for years at one of these times when I come to the DR, I want to bring, you know, you one of my girls with me, you know, for mm -hmm. that, for that camp trip, for them to be a part of it, but also for them to be, for them to yeah. experience it. And, you know, I, I think it's just important that we involve our kids. Mm -hmm. I said this the other night at, uh, at the meeting, None of our kids chose to go into ministry. Mm -hmm. Mo most situations, you sat down with, with Patricia, you, you have a conversation with, should we do this? Is this where God is leading us? But you probably didn't sit down with Jose Fernando and say, no. what, what do you think? You know? Um, so that's, mm. that, I, I love that you are, are intentional right. in, in that and thing. I think that's important. And one important thing in that, in that, uh, in that point, mm. uh, life, it, it's, it's field of moments. Mm. Mm -hmm. But not all moments are equal. No. You have to know what moment will be important for the rest of his life. Mm. And they come. Mm. And you should be prepared mm. and you, 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 you should ask for strength for that moment. Mm. Usually it, it is not announced. Like uh, in 30 minutes you'll have a lifetime moment. No. Mm -hmm. You have to just uh, uh, do it. Be right. And that conversation maybe will be the most important in his life. Well, and, and I love, and I would say if there's one, if there's one focused practical takeaway, there's a lot of things that we talked about, yes. I mean, focused, but, but there's how you go out just for something simple, but it's a scheduled thing. You go out for McDonald's fries and have man talk. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and again, I really think that if more people had that focused time and had that focused conversation, yeah. um, you know, and so now I'm sure every once in a while it doesn't work and you guys don't get, but it's not like, uh, you know, that's where I struggle sometimes when you meet every other month, every other week, if you, if you miss it, you're, you're gone for like a month, mm -hmm. you know, but when you say, no, 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 this is a regular thing that he can look forward to. Hey, when, let me ask you, when's the last time you took your kid out for fries? Take your kid out for fries. When's the last time you took your wife out for fries? No, my daughter's 15 months old. You can still take your kid out for fries. That's true. We do actually. Sometimes, I guarantee so. you. <laughs> I actually, guarantee last you. night we, uh, I, Mel, I got home and Mel was like, I really want to go and buy more fabric. And I was like. You go, I have to go to youth group tonight, but you go now, go quick so that I can leave for youth group, but I'm going to stay. And my daughter and I played for an hour together. That's awesome. What, what did you play? Uh, we, well, we called, we called her, her aunt for her birthday. Nice. And, uh, and then we just played. No, I mean, she's 15 months old. Playing is like whatever she's interested in for 30 seconds. And then <laughs> yes. the next thing she's, <laughs> interested, <laughs> yeah. that she's interested in yeah. for 30 hey, seconds. Hey, don't worry. That's exactly what it is dealing with a teenager. Oh, for yes. okay. yeah. All right. Yeah. I have to look forward to it. Hey, Josh, I w would love to continue talking and talking yeah. and talking and talking, but I think it's vitally important that we go into... Small, small group. group. All right, that was perfect. Look at that. Hey, listen, Josh, we are wow, on. Wow, we're hey, on. great transition. Wow. We finish each other's... Sandwiches. Classic. That's what I was going to say. I hate that movie. Now my, So now I'm in the stage. Sorry, I know this is not what Small Group's about. But I'm in the stage now where my daughter is like watching different like Disney movies. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I have Encanto memorized. And she watched Frozen once. And I said, Mela, 
I Frozen came out when I was in college or high school, probably college. And uh, I, I was like, I've heard it way too many times. You're like, I, I can't I, do I it. I can't do it anymore. Like, we had to pick a new movie. Yeah. Let her get, like, addicted <laughs> to a different movie other than yeah. Frozen. Yeah. So I knew that line. And it's also from another show. But I just... <clears throat> so no more finishing each good. other's... Sentences. Sent- sentences. So you don't talk about... Uh, you don't talk about... Uh, Bruno? We talk about Bruno Bruno? because she loves Encanto. Oh. And I know all the words in English and in Spanish. Okay. Wow. So wow. it's... Hey, so Josh, what is small group? Small group's a time when we talk about either encouraging stories or funny stories, what's happening in the lives of our guests or the lives of ourselves, about what God's doing and allowing to happen, just funny things. So I, 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 Umberto, I want you to think for a minute about what is an encouraging story through either being uh, a spiritual more formations pastor or the podcast or with camps, but maybe what's a life change that you've seen happen that you just say, you know what, this has just been so, it's one of those stories that I hold on to, to encourage and to go back to when times are rough. So, so think about that. I want to tell you about the, the intentionality of this man. Mm. I love Chinola, which is which is passion fruit jam. Okay, yeah. love it. Uh, marmalade. I, it's yeah. there's something about it that just I just I can't get enough. In fact, when your wife and you went back, did the yeah. said, bring me some Chinola. And we got you some. You did. You did. Well, they're making less and less of it. So the really? last time I was there in yeah. the Dominican Republic, this man drove me around to at least four different grocery stores or wow. malls and we ran all the way up um i actually scared him when when we're t- please tell tell the story because i don't you know we were at the in the big avenue yeah of the of, of, of dominican republic and we and we were running around and yeah i was scared at first but this this guy is very i just was like hey this the street is clear and i just walked across the street and he's like you can't do that so, but uh, but not yeah in, not in we job. literally started in the early afternoon afternoon we had some place to be that night yeah. mm-hmm. and we had to go to dinner right yes, yes, we had to go to dinner and uh and it was i mean we showed up well on dominican time we showed up on time but uh but, you know <laughs> but but he took me around and he found me some chinola that's awesome. great Fine. man that's some intentionality right there it is it is all right so tell us an encouraging story well I re- what i remember the last thing uh encouraging was at school okay mm. I was I was going through these uh, times when you think that you are not doing something fruitful. Mm. Have you have you feel? Oh, that? absolutely. Yeah. And you think is, is it, am I doing something fruitful? Is this work? Yeah. And I was praying, God, please help me understand. And that same day, I went to school, and the first thing I found is this student, this girl, mm-hmm. and she just say said hello and just told me uh, straight. Mister, I want you to know something. What you are doing here is giving fruit. Wow. That's so cool. I cry. Yeah. Yeah, I literally cry. Yeah. It was like God answering uh, my, mm. my prayer and let me know that I'm uh, in the right path. Yeah. I love that. I mean, God says don't grow weary in doing good. And yeah. we talked about before of like, you know, cup running empty is so easy. But you know what? God is intentional. God is sovereign. And even in those moments, he's going to put people in your life to yes. give you encouragement. Well, and and I love those. I love those scenes in the gospel that it says, and Jesus, knowing what was in their hearts, said, and he spoke. Now, a lot of times he was speaking to people who were doubting. He was speaking yeah. to the Pharisees who were against. Mm-hmm. But I think in that same way, God knew exactly what was in your heart. He yeah. knew exactly what. And he said, Umberto, you don't deserve this. You you haven't earned this. Mm-hmm. And honestly, you really don't need it. Mm-hmm. But But you know what? In this moment, I'm going to send you a little encouragement. I'm going to send you a little love. And, and I'm going to send that person to say the right thing at the right time. And, and it does. It's, it's so, it's so encouraging. There are some times that somebody will say something to me and I'll go, oh, this is so great. And then something bad will happen. And I'm like, well, that stinks. Why can't? And I'm like, no, 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 no. God just decided to do it in reverse. And I'm going to be mature enough to hold on to that encouragement. Yeah. Even, you know, so. Yeah. That's well, crazy. good. Well, that, that's small group. That's our time just reflecting on on what God is doing and uh, what's happening in our ministries. And uh, I guess that's the end of Stacking Chairs. Uh, uh, Umberto, as we as we're close, ¿Cómo se dice Stacking Chairs? How do you say Stacking Chairs? Sillas amontonadas. 
Omar sillas Granados. amontonadas. Sillas, amont sillas amontonadas. Sillas amontonadas. <laughs> sillas amontonadas. That's, that's why. That's how you exit the episode. Well, hey guys, thank you. Go ahead. No, 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 no. <laughs> thank you so much, Humberto. Well, thank, thank you. Well, it was a, it was a, a great pleasure. Yes. Un placer. Un placer. Un placer. <laughs> Love talking to you guys. Stack those chairs. Uh, uh, what, sillas what amontonadas. It? There it is. <laughs>